Hi, and welcome to this week's Life Lessons video. It's great to be back with you all. This week, we're talking all about self-identity crisis and finding the authentic you. Do you sometimes feel like a fake, that you're presenting a mask to the outside world or that you're maybe living a lie? Do you have a sense of uncertainty or confusion or you just simply don't know who you really are? Well, in this week's video, we're going to be explaining the telltale signs that you may be having an identity crisis. We're going to be talking about the typical trigger situations as an adult which bring about this crisis and most importantly, looking at the deeper rooted reasons that you find yourself in this situation in the first place. And then we'll also be sharing with you some practical tips and examples of how you can rediscover and reconnect with your authentic self and live your truth. Welcome to our Wu Wei Wisdom Life Lessons series. In each episode, we answer your questions, reveal the powerful life lesson and offer you lots of practical tips and advice to help you live in balance, harmony and flow. Okay, David, so what would you say are the typical signs or symptoms for a person who's having this sort of identity crisis? So what I normally find is the people, the number one thing is people pleasing, always looking around, trying to see what people like and conform to what they think that they would like. So it's like we call it in our model CCJ and it's the comparing, comparing themselves with other people, thinking they're, they don't want to be over them. They don't want to be better than them and they don't want to be worse than them. So what they're doing, instead of listening to themselves and taking themselves as the guide, they're looking around as a, at, a, at other people for the example. The problem is, of course, everybody they see, they're having to conform with mm-hmm. them and that's the problem. So this is, I guess, somebody, and, and comment below if this is something you recognise, somebody who tends to shift their opinions and their behaviour according to the environment they find themselves in or the people they find themselves with to to placate, uh, to fit in, to please other people rather than to stand their ground and be self-assured about who they are and their own opinions. Well, this is part of the identity crisis because over time they are so busy placating people Mm -hmm. They forget what their own opinions are. So they'll have an opinion with one group of people, their family, perhaps a different group with people at work or with their friends. So all the time they're trying to fit in. It's a terrible word. They're trying to fit in. They've got this concept that they don't want to be different. They don't want to be ostracized. They don't want to be outside. They don't want to have their own opinion. And they've spent their life, and this becomes very familiar, and habitual. So they're making these choices that they want to be part of the in crowd. And to be part of the in crowd, they have to think and act and do what the in crowd does. So over time, this way of conforming, they start to lose their own belief system. Mm -hmm. They start to lose what they really stand up for until in the end, they're not standing up for anything at all. And by extension, David, if this is your friendships, who you hang out with, Uh, how you act in different social circumstances. I guess this lack of uh, uncertainty about your own identity or willingness to give up your own identity, this extends into your romantic relationships. So would this be the sort of person who's in a relationship where they allow the relationship to mould who they are? They allow their partner to mould who they are rather than reaching a kind of a healthy cooperation? Well, yes, it's the same thing because they, they, they believe that there is something wrong or, or inferior about them and they have to live up to a, a standard. They have an image in their mind about what they should be, how they should be acting, how they should look their size, their shape, their dress size, the colour of the hair. So they're always, they're not happy with 
who they are. They haven't, in my word, in the Taoist word, accepted themselves. Mm -hmm. They're always striving and looking to be something or someone else. So they will always be, we're back to comparing, looking at magazines, comparing their size, comparing the way they look, comparing their relationships to their friend relationships. So it's almost like we talk in many videos about this donkey and the carrot. They're always stretching for the carrot chasing the dragon. They're always wanting better. They always think there is something missing in them. And so all the time, what they're doing, they're eroding their own self-worth, their own value, and they're always saying, and this would be one of our three lies then, I'm not enough. I'm not good enough. Just me, myself, I'm not enough. Mm -hmm. I have to strive to be something else. And this is where it all gets confused. Because if you're not enough with yourself, how can you value and love yourself? Mm -hmm. How can you have an identity if you have this basic core lie? And that's what it is. It's a lie that you're not good enough or you're not enough or you can't cope or you're unlovable. Those are the three lies we talk about every video. I'm not good enough. I can't cope. I'm unlovable or unworthy. And if you're holding one of those three lies, how can you have a, a loving relationship with yourself and identity with yourself? Because you're always looking external. You're always looking for something else. And it is like a, it's like a drug addict. You're looking for the next hit to make you be better, to be acceptable. But that never comes, does it? Think about it all through your life. If this is you, you're always searching. You're always on this treadmill. We call it the carousel of despair. You're always trying to be better, to do more, to fit in, to be part of the crowd. You're always worried about what other people think about you, or what their opinions of you, and you're on this treadmill. Mm. And I think, David, that thing about the lie, the lie of we don't think we're good enough, so we have to pretend to be someone else. We have to pretend we put on this mask to fit in with other people or to create a false image with other people. We talked about this idea of that that lie that you hold within your belief system, it becomes the dirty little secret. And so I guess that lack of self-worth, lack of self-identity, lack of self-assurance in who you are, you want, you don't want to tell anyone about that because you're putting on this mask. So other signs and symptoms of a self-identity crisis, I guess, would be, you know, it's the sort of person who doesn't want to talk about what they like, what they're passionate about, because either they don't know or they don't want to share it because they think other people aren't going to like it. It's the sort of person that who doesn't want to commit to relationships because they think they're going to get found out in a relationship or doesn't want to commit to major life decisions because they're not sure what's the right thing. They're not, they're not driven by a strong sense of who they are and what they want in life. And I'll tell you, I worked with a client just two weeks ago. I, I, I'd heard of the term, but I never really understood it until I worked with this client and she was good enough to share it with me. Imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. Have you heard about yeah. it? So she's work, she's just got promoted, and they must think she's really good, but she's now saying to herself, oh my goodness, they've misunderstood me. I'm not good enough for this. I'm going to make a mess up of it. And we had to talk through that. I am an imposter. Uh, and she actually said, I'm about two ranks above what I think I should be. But, but I didn't understand this. I said, well, surely your employer, your bosses must think you're good enough. And they say, well, they constantly tell me I'm good enough and the results prove I'm good enough, but I don't believe them. And then when we do the golden thread, why, 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 it comes down to I'm not enough. And so it's what you say to yourself. And really, this is so important. It's not what you say to other people. It's not the lies and the masks and the forced identity that you give to other people, because all you're doing there is creating the maze of confusion. And your mind, your inner child is creating that confusion because it believes it's keeping you safe and from being exposed and embarrassed. Because this is what my client said. She said, I lie awake at night in dread. This is the word she said in dread that my boss actually finds out that I can't do the job. Mm -hmm. And she said, I lie awake and I run through all the possible scenarios that I make one glaring mistake. These are the words she was using, glaring mistake. 
and he will come down on me and then it will be like taking the top off and he'll see the real me and then I'll get sacked. So she lies awake at night running this scenario all of the time. And this is a no-win scenario. This is what the mind is doing. The mind is not doing that to harm you. The mind thinks, well, let's think of the worst case scenario because we're prepared if it ever happens. But it's never going to happen. Why cloud up your thinking in your life with all of these doom scenarios? Because you're wasting energy. No wonder you wake up feeling tired if your mind's doing this somersault or during your rest time. Yeah, and I would say this, I mean, the, the idea of the imposter syndrome of, of not fitting in, not being good enough is an extension of this identity crisis. <clears throat> and we talked about imposter syndrome in our emotional resilience video, so I'll put a <clears throat> link to that. But the physical impact of this uncertainty, lack of self-belief, not knowing who you are, putting on a fake self, is things like strong light, red light feelings of anxiety, uh, lying awake at night worrying, burning out with energy because you're trying so hard to please everyone and de be a different... That's, a, that's a number one thing. Be a different person to every situation and please and please and please mm. and be on this unsustainable... Uh, never-ending treadmill of molding yourself to different situations. But also, David, I know for a lot of people, when they have this strong uh, lack of rootedness, a sh lack of self-assurance to who they really are, you um, it's like you're not grounded. It's like you emotionally disconnect from the real world from society, you disconnect from the life that you have, whether it's your friends, your family, in your job, what you're doing, it's almost like you, this way of thinking and way of pretending to be something you're not, not knowing who you are, it creates that, like, would you say it's like a mental or emotional separation from reality somehow? Well, it's both, you know, and that tiredness, because this is the number one thing that people report to me is they've got no energy. This is what they say. I, I'm always running on empty. Well, it's not because they've got no energy. It's because they're using the energy in the wrong place. The image that always comes to mind for me, and I've used it a couple of times, it's like having a plug and you're looking for a socket to plug it into. And so they're constantly looking, as you say, for reassurance of their boss, for reassurance of their partner, to reassurance of their parents, of their friends, that they're good enough, that they're enough, that they like them, that they're part of the crowd. And they're walking around with this plug, trying to plug it into people's socket. And really, because this is a spirituality question, this is Shen. This is why this question is so important. This is a spirituality question, because where they should be putting that plug is into themselves. Because if you're constantly looking externally, this is exactly what Alex was saying. This will run your battery down. You are expelling so much wasted energy because you will never get the desired results. You can only look to yourself that you address those lies, which we're going to talk about is in a moment. Because if you're living your life on that basis that I'm not enough, I can't cope, I'm unlovable, I have to please people, I have to, I have to adapt to them, I can't upset them, I don't want to have any confrontation, any upset in my life, my life has got to be like sweet and easy, what I call the Disney World utopian, where everything works out and I've got to mould myself like a piece of clay into everybody else's expectations. No wonder you lose your own, you lose your own direction. I call it ye, intention. You, instead of following your intention, your life journey, you're following every, everybody else's li life journey. So if you're with this person, you're following their life journey, this person, their life journey. What life journey is your life journey? Yeah. And this is why this is so important. And I think that, that kind of visualization for me of almost running around like a headless chicken. So it's not even like you're 
following one singular person mm -hmm. on their life journey, mm -hmm. not your own. You're constantly chopping and changing between different people and situations. So no wonder you're confused. So I, I just wanted to be clear, David, when you said Shan, you're, you, what you mean is you're talking about connecting to the authentic you, the higher self, the spiritual self, whatever a term you want to use for that, rather than being led by the human-centered mind, rather than being led by the ego and allowing your ego to say, well, I've got to please that person, I've got to please that person, I've got to fit in with this situation. Rather than running on that operating system, you're saying plug yourself into who you really are, the authentic you, your highest self, your spiritual self, that essence of who you are rather than constantly looking around externally. Exactly. And this is the basis of our teaching. We believe that you're more than skin and bones in a collection of cells. You are more than just your mind. And if you put your mind in control, you become a servant to your mind. And remember, we're talking about mostly uh, is criticizing, comparing and being judgmental. So if you're constantly comparing yourself to other people and wanting to be what they are, you are always one step behind them. You are never in front and you are more than that. And for many of my clients, that mind, that human centered mind, we call it, as Alex said, some call it your ego, is so powerful. You become a servant to that part of your mind. And remember on many videos, it's like having a big dog and the dog's pulling you around. You're following your mind instead of remembering the basic core teaching. You control your mind. Your mind does not control you. And what part of you is controlling your mind, as Alex just explained, I call it Shen. You may call it your spirituality, your essence, your higher self, your gut feeling, your inner knowledge, your inner knowing, whatever word you're comfortable with, but you're more than just your mind. And that part of you that I call Shen knows who you are. That part of you thinks it's ridiculous to say you're not good enough. It doesn't even make sense. Not good enough for whom? For what? What part of you is criticizing what part of you? If you think of something I hear every day, David, I have self-doubt. What does that mean? What part of you is doubting mm. what part of you? Is it your mind doubting your nose, your big toe, your head? It's a nonsense. And you quickly drop into this way of thinking and it becomes very familiar and then you're on the hamster's wheel. You are something much greater. I say in each video, you are divine. You are made of cosmic stardust. You are awesome. How could you, how could you be better or worse than that? And how could you delve into this drug of doubting yourself, of criticizing yourself, of being judgmental, of wanting to be like someone else, of looking at their life and saying, oh, if only my life was like their life. You don't know what their life is like because I normally find that they're doing exactly the same as you. They've put a mask and what you see is not the real person. <laughs> And you're falling for their trick. Yeah, a fake you're, following a fake. A fake a following a fake. A fake following a fake on a yeah. fake mission to a fake destination yeah. that doesn't exist. Yeah. This is nonsense. When everything that you need, everything you will ever want is always there, always will be there, has never gone away. All we're trying to do in this teaching is to connect to who you are. You are not perfect. You will not get everything right. You are not better than anybody else. You are not worse than anybody else. We have a oneness. You have skills and talents that I haven't got. That doesn't make you better than me. Doesn't make you me worse than you. You should embrace those skills and talents and follow your identity because this is who you are nothing else. You know who you are. You've always known who you are. And if you fall into that trap of comparing, you are sacrificing. You're giving away 
your greatest gift. You are just throwing it away instead of having that truth, honesty, and integrity for yourself. You are worth it because we're all worth it. You are no different. Mm. David, I think what you've explained there, what's really resonated with me and what you said is that actually we're making a choice. We're making a choice to reject who we are and our own self-identity in favour of following, copying, comparing, trying to fit in, trying to please, trying to placate other people and other situations because we believe, we bought into the light that we're not good enough. So we've made, we're making that choice. And actually, for the people who reach this point in their adult life who have a self-identity crisis, they've been making this choice all through their life. It may be subtle. They may just be managing it. It may not have created major, major problems for them. But all the time, every time they make the choice, they are affirming that they're rejecting who they are. They're rejecting their Shen. I'm rejecting my Shen. I'm choosing them over me. I'm choosing them over me. I'm choosing them over me. And that becomes habitual. That becomes a pattern of behavior. Now, before we go back and talk about why we made the original choice to reject who we are and follow somebody else, I think for most people, most people perhaps watching this video will say, I've just reached a crisis point. It's just dawned on me. It's just come like a bolt out of this bl a blue that, my God, I don't know who I am. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know who the real me is. This, it's not uncommon that this happens, this point of crisis in adult life. Is that what you found, David? Yeah, yes. So there's two things there. Uh, uh, the first thing, you said something very important. And let's just emphasize this word choice, because when I'm working with clients, this is the most difficult word that they will accept mm -hmm. and own, take responsibility for. Now, they will tell me it's not a choice, David, and they will then use justifications. It's a habit. It's ingrained. I'm not in control. I don't realize I'm doing it. It happened before I realized. And all of this is shifting responsibility. If you take one thing away from this video, the word choice, not making a choice is making a choice. Every choice, every habit is a choice. Yes, it's set on default. Yes, you're not looking at it. Yes, you may be doing it for a long time, but it's still a choice. And you have to take that responsibility. Now, the crisis comes... Sorry, David, can I just mm -hmm. ask you, though, about make, that point about not making a choice is a choice. So if you if you say, well, I'm just going to go along with this situation. I'm just going to go along You're with what my friends choice. say. I just, I'm just going to go with the flow of this. Actually, by choosing to not make the choice to speak your truth, to not make the choice to vocalize what you're thinking, what you believe, your opinion in any situation by just going with the flow. That's the not that's, making the choice. That's the choice. That's the choice. That's you're, the choice. You're, you're, you're essentially making the choice to reject exactly. who you are. Exactly. Uh, you're making the choice to reject affirming and speaking your truth, affirming your identity. Exactly. You're making the choice to put their, their Other people. wants in front yeah. of yours. These are all choices. My clients dislike this intensely because they want to put themselves, poor me, I don't realize I'm doing it. Oh, it's not a choice, David. It just happens. These are choices, as Alex says. You are choosing to put their needs and wants in front of yours. You are making that choice. Not making a choice is making a choice. You are always making choices. Even sitting on the fence is making a choice. <laughs> You're choosing to sit on the fence. And every time you cannot not make a choice, you're making these choices all of the time. All we're trying to do is for you to take responsibility, what I call own, own those choices. Don't go, oh, I didn't realize. I don't know I'm doing it. It's not me. I'm not making a choice. I'm just trying to please people. That's a choice. Mm. 
That's a choice. I just want them to like me. That's a or choice. What, or what about if someone says, oh, I've got no real opinion on this. That's a choice. I'm just happy to go with what they're saying. That's a choice. I mean, we're not talking about being strongly opinionated on every minuscule no. issue. But when it comes to stuff that is, you know, does butt up against core beliefs about you, your relationship with the world, how, you know, what you value, it is important to put your hand up and say, no, this is what I believe in, and or listen, this is my opinion. And listen, you know, as I say in the, on each video, you give us this space and time to allow me to tell you my truth. I'm not saying this is the truth. Mm. And then you write in and you make comments and you tell me your truth. And if we have a difference of opinion, to me, that's very healthy because I may have something to learn off you. You may have something to learn off, off me. So as I always say to my clients, because I let them record the session so they can go away and study it and go through the hour or the hour and a half we've had together and pick out everything. And I always say to them, please come back on the next session. And this is if you disagree, don't just say I disagree with you. What is it you disagree with? And why do you disagree? So it's giving that background information. It's like I say, what do you believe and why do you believe it? It's no good saying, oh, I disagree with you. And I go, oh, right, why? And I go, oh, I don't know. Just doesn't sound right. Why doesn't it sound right? I don't know. You've got to have that conviction. And so we can then have a correct conversation so we can learn because that's how humans learn, sharing knowledge. That's why we're always encouraging you, make comments, make comments, engage, join the Facebook, the free Facebook community, discuss. We're all in this together. We're all learning and, grow and growing. There's no gurus and nobody knows more than any, anyone else. We're all sharing our experiences. You've had experiences in your life that I haven't. Share that, what that meant, how you got through it, what did you learn from those life lessons. This is why we've called this series, I think we've done 30 now, life lessons, because we're always missing the, we're always meeting these life lessons. How did we learn? How did we get through? If I got something to learn off, I wouldn't do that. I would do that. That's a good idea. That's what these videos are about. So are you talking about having confidence in your own opinions, getting used to thinking about, well, what do I believe about this situation? And then vocalizing that, because often if we've spent our whole lives going inwards, denying us our own opinions, denying us ourselves the space and time to think through, what do I actually think about exactly. this? Do I, you know, we get into the habit of just chopping more like chopping it off at the root and then following other people so it's almost like an exercise that you present your clients to well no if you disagree if you if you have a strong sense of this bit was not right for me david then let's explore let's get you used to exactly examining why is it exactly. not right so if you're if there's something within you that's saying that doesn't sit right with me let's get used to you of forming an opinion on it, expressing an opinion on it without being concerned that everyone's going to laugh at you or exactly. or dismiss you or, you know, say, oh, you're talking rubbish. Exactly. It's a very powerful exercise in the safety and the security of our sessions that you can go away, listen to the video, listen to what I said, listen to what you said in the moment, and you can go away, reflect on it, and then you can build up your case, your proposition. I disagree with you on that one, David, and this is why I disagree with you. Now, isn't that much better? Because we can then have a correct, mature talk. And maybe I was wrong, and I will say, well, maybe I was wrong on that. Or maybe you were wrong, and then we can, we can then, well, wrong is the wrong title. Maybe you have a misunderstanding on that situation, and we can explore that misunderstanding. It's not about being right or wrong. It's about exploring and widening your knowledge and your your wisdom. And, and that's very important that, that, that Alex said, because Alex says, how does this manifest? Well, it manifests, I can tell you, that you wake up one day and you are lost. You don't know which way you're going. You've given away so much of yourself, so much of your life, so much of your intention, and that could have been being a mother, being a parent, 
being working for one company and giving everything to them, doing something for somebody, being part of a crowd, and you're giving, 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 I would say with the expectation of getting something in return, but you never get anything in return. So then you start hearing words like, I'm running on empty, I've got no energy, I've got no drive, I'm lethargic, I never know what I want, I've got no decisions, everybody are more powerful than me. These are the things, because as Alex said, don't think you wake up one morning and this happens. This is like a dripping tap yeah. wearing away over time. But the but the dripping tap's been going on all your life, Absolutely. but at some point the bucket just gets completely full and overflows. Absolutely. And that's the tipping point, isn't it? This that's is the tipping, yeah. So the tipping point, as you said, David, could be uh, when you've been in a career all your life and then you retire and you're like, oh gosh, what what am okay. I? What Who am I now? I'm no longer the director of the company. I'm no longer the people person people rely on at work or the mother who's been a wonderful mother all their life and then all their children leave home, Where what's the identity now? Or, you know, the guy or the woman who meet, reaches the midlife crisis. Or I guess this could be if you have a real uh, life shock, so a real he a shocking health scare or a real financial scare in your life that turns on its head every kind of assumption, every expectation, every... Uh, belief about who you thought you were and and the stability you have is that sort of another other things that well, we you, bring you on. mentioned two things there midlife crisis yeah. for a man this is what it normally is they suddenly start losing their hair <laughs> perhaps put a bit of weight around their, their their waist they can't play sport they can't do this they can't do that that's when they go and buy a sports car and this is the crisis because the way they saw themselves is not the way they are now Another one, as you, as you say, are for ladies when the children grow up, up and leave home. I think they've got a word for that when they go to university. They've flown the nest. Flown the nest. Empty nesters. Empty nesters, Empty that's nesters, right. I, thought, yeah. I, knew, I knew that we're very, we're very good, I think, in our society of coming up with these words. I can't keep track of them. Or for ladies going through menopause. Now you're not childbearing and this is a great change in your identity. These are the life lessons that shake you to your root. And this is why if you're constantly looking externally for your grounding, as Alex said earlier, it's disappeared. So if your grounding was being a mother and suddenly they fly the nest, well, where's your grounding now? And this is why you have to ground yourself back to yourself. Mm -hmm. This is the only way forward. Just yesterday, my last client said, oh, but David, this is isolating and selfish. This is the last thing that's isolating and selfish. This is cherishing and nourishing you so you can be of service to other people. To be of service, you must have something to serve. And if you've served and done your job with your children, there are many, many, many zillions of other things. Is it time to start your own job, your own career, to do something you've always wanted to do, to live your passion, to be in abundance? Look at our abundance video. You know, these are opportunities that are presenting yourself all of the time. What is it you love? What is it your passion? That could be art, that could be needlework, that could be cooking, that could be anything, anything. Buying secondhand clothes and reselling them, anything, as long as it's your passion. So all the time it's connecting back to mm -hmm. Shen, living your passion, and then you'll be on your course. I think as well, David, I, I could say this happened to me as well, really. This idea of having uh, a spiritual awakening or all of a sudden having that light bulb coming on in your mind about what really matters in life and a lot of the stuff that you thought mattered, a lot of the systems that you bought into, you it, it's almost like a dawning that actually they're not so important. But that spiritual awakening, connecting to your Shen, your higher self, whatever you want to call it, which can which happens to a lot of people in their adult lives, as well as that being a really, really positive thing, that can cause a massive jolt in you in, and for some people an identity crisis. So that, I guess, would be bracketed under the trigger situation that causes it. But I want to talk about the root, the root cause now. Going back to that, almost that first time when we made the choice 
to reject who we are and to please, to follow the lie. Do you want to talk a little bit more about that, David? So I can't be, I can't be specific, specific for you, um, but I can, I always say to my clients, I've been in these woods before, but I haven't been on your trail. So I haven't been on your path. But this is what I find in general. It comes from childhood and childhood experiences. And most adults will create an environment where they want the child wants to please them. Most children want to please their parents. And so they will say things like, oh, daddy's really proud of you, mommy's really proud of you, oh, we're disappointed in you, or whatever. And so the child quickly learns that they have to please and receive praise and reassurance. They're looking for that validation, I call it. And so if you're constantly looking <clears throat> externally for validation, this in my experience, I'm not saying in your experience, but in my experience, this is the root of the problem. If you are looking externally for reassurance, validation, to be stroked, to be told that you're good enough, to be told that you're lovable, to be told that you can do anything, somebody there to step in when things get wrong, some like a fairy godmother. If you've got that mindset on any of those, then if you look back and do the golden thread, look at your childhood, particularly around that age of six to nine years old. This is a very important time because this is a time when you were a child, your sensitivity were fully awakened, but your cognitive reasoning wasn't. So when your parents are telling you that they disappointed you or they have big expectations of you, how you do at school, and you, and you do something, something happens, and you don't pass the test or you don't get good results, and you see that disappointment in your father or mother's face, Something like that. I'm just using one example. Uh, and that will create this really disruption in you believing that the source of your well-being is not you, but external. So a child will believe, quite rightly, because they are as a child, their well-being depends on their parents. But not now. You're an adult. And you have to take self-responsibility. Where in your life, where is the time when you have taken that step to say, I am now responsible, mm. not others? So when you're a child, of course, your parents are responsible to feed you, clothe you, educate you, look after you, and most try their best. When is it your time? When does it become your responsibility? And a lot of people get that mixed up, and then as they grow up, they move away from home and then they're looking for other people to do, yeah. to do it. So rather than looking for their parents to tell them whether they're good enough, who they are, whether they've done the right thing, whether whatever they've done was okay or not okay, they just transplant that on as an adult to their friends, their boss, their partner. It's so they, the parents may be out of the picture, but it's it's still, it's other people. And David... Or, or it could still be, could be it still could be still be what their parents think. And I would, uh, tell me if, the, if I'm wrong in thinking this, what you've just described is probably the most typical scenario. Yeah. But equally in childhood, if we are in a childhood, either two extremes, either in a childhood situation where we're suffering abuse, yeah. physical, emotional, sexual abuse, we choose to placate, to try and be a good girl, to try and be a good boy, not to speak our truth because we just want to keep the peace, keep the peace, keep our head down, keep out of trouble, stop the bad stuff from happening. Yeah. Or at the other extreme, if we are brought up in a situation where our parents are very loving, very overprotective, doing everything for us, not allowing us to explore and make mistakes because they want to rush in and, and sort everything out and make everything right for us. That equally means that we just go with what they say. We're never allowed to <coughs> cultivate our own opinions, our own understanding of who we are and what we want out of life. Yeah, and, and in our model, we call that the emotional pendulum. And yeah. I think we've done a video we've on... We've done a video yeah. on overprotective parenting, and I'll put a link to that as well. So Alex described that perfectly. You can go to the two extremes. And 
And what we're trying to show you and to demonstrate and to share with you is identify where you are. Remember, you can't change what you don't understand. Because once you've kind of identified one or either of the extremes, then you can come in the, to the center into the Wu Wei. The Wu Wei is always about self-responsibility, owning, taking responsibility for, for your life, re-looking at those core values, beliefs, standards, morals, whatever you want to call them. I call them beliefs because those beliefs are the driver that's driving your life. Make sure your beliefs are fit for purpose. Make sure you believe what you believe. Mm. Sounds easy, doesn't it? <laughs> Make sure that you can stand up. And if we're talking, you can say, I believe I'm not good enough, David. And this is why. Give me the reason, not the result. Remember, I said a couple of sessions ago, a lot of my clients will tell me, well, I'm unlovable, David. Why? Because I've had three or four failed relationships. That's not the reason. That's the result. That's the outcome of thinking you're yeah. not good enough or unlovable. Give me the reason why you're unlovable, can't cope, not good enough. Give me that core reason, what started it. And I will always guarantee you, nearly always, it goes back to someone said something to you in your childhood or you perceive something. And that's what we've got to change. That changes your life changes your life because it puts you onto a different track. But David, I can I can kind of hear people saying at home, and we do get asked this question a lot. If we get to the point where we're like, yeah, okay, I've been living a life. Mm -hmm. I can see I've been putting this fake mask on to please other people, to fit in all my life. I literally have no idea who I am, what I stand for, what I believe in, what is my authentic self. In practical terms, David, where on earth do I start? How do I find out who I am? Because it's like <clears throat> I've spent 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years on this other path following other people's truth, but not my own. Okay. How, where do I start? You nuts and bolts. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> Stop lying to yourself. Number one main thing, do not lie to yourself. Everything that goes through your self-talk, everything that comes out of your mouth to yourself is the truth and you can back it up. How do we know it's the truth then? Well, you can back it up. Okay. You can back it up. So if you say, I'm not good enough, then give me the evidence that proves you're not good enough. So here's what a client said to me two days ago. Okay, I've got the evidence. She read back. I've got the evidence, David. Great. So what's the evidence? I'm not good enough because my father told me I wasn't good enough. I said, what kind of evidence is that? She said, well, my father told me. So I said, well, okay. So everything your father told you is the truth. And she said, no, of course not. I said, well, why would you believe that? Why would you discount this and believe that? This doesn't make mm. sense. This is proof that it's not the truth. And that's the work you've got to do. In answer to Alex's question, this is the self-inquiry. This is the golden thread. Join our Facebook community. Share with everybody else. You'll get so much help. We all help each other. Ask the questions. Everybody will pile in, give their opinion. Listen, talk to people. You've got to do that for yourself. Do it for you. And this is where people will not do it. And here's another one. Consistency. Don't be inspired by this video and go away and do it. And then tomorrow you're back to the same thing. To be resolute, to be consistent. 10, 15 minutes a day. This is what I call meditation. I call meditation focusing, sitting quietly with yourself, challenging yourself. This is what I believe. Let me find the evidence. You've got to do that work for yourself. And the number one thing people say, well, this is so complicated, so, so hard. Stop lying. What's hard about that? In, in a real life situation, though, David, so you've given <clears throat> the example of don't lie to yourself when you say I'm not good enough, you know, the <clears throat> kind of really deep core belief stuff. But this principle of not lying to yourself, this can be applied to every single, every day practical situation. Everything. So, for example, if you, if someone suggests, right, uh, a group of friends suggests, well, I'm, you know, we're going to go here this weekend and we're going to do this. Do you, are you happy to do this? 
if you're not happy to do something, say, if say you're not happy to do it, don't lie to keep the peace. And you or, enter in discussion, yeah. you say, <clears throat> I understand that you, that you want to do, to do that. I would like to do this. Can we find a cooperation? Can we find a way that yeah. we can work this through together? You've got to enter into that discussion. But that starts from that basic yeah. core, do not lie. Yeah, yeah. Don't say, oh, I'd love to do that. Wouldn't that be fun? When inside you're going, oh, my God, I hate that. Yeah. Because that creates that separation, which will result in red lights. Mm -hmm. Whatever you want to call it, stress, anxiety, depression, yeah. fear, scared because you're creating this internal separation. Yeah, and that's the, that's the key indicator. Yeah. I guess if the question is, how do I know when I'm lying to myself? You, the get, the red, you exactly. get the red light feelings. And then you need to do the golden thread process and, and dig deep and say, what am I thinking here? What am I believing here? Where is this inner tension, inner yeah. conflict yeah. coming from? Yes. So we can apply this principle of not lying to ourselves to the deeper core belief lies we talk about in most of our videos. I'm not good enough. I'm not lovable. I can't manage. I can't cope. Or you can apply it at the micro scale to every decision you make, every action you take, every way you interact with other people, other situations, and then say to myself, is this my truth? Am I speaking my truth in this situation? So speaking your truth does not mean being completely selfish, being immovable, mm. saying, well, this is my opinion and I'm not going to budge. As you said, it's about then opening up that dialogue. Okay. So let me just clarify that because Alex has just moved oh, it on God. a little bit. No, it's no, it's good. But first of all, it's much easier to be truthful to yourself mm -hmm. because nobody else is involved. And you know when you're lying. I call it walking the walk and talking the talk. You know to yourself. So that's where I would start. I would be consistent, be resolute every day, review what you're doing the previous day, review how many times you lied to yourself. You will be amazed. You will be amazed how much comes through your mouth to people and to yourself, which is not the truth. Work on that first. And then what Alex says, now once you've got that right, which doesn't involve anyone else, now you can start speaking your truth to other people. Now, this is why it's better to do it to yourself first, because when you're doing it to other people, there is another skill. It's a good job you're a sensitive person. This is where sensitivity really works, because now you've got to deliver your truth. And that's the skill. So the first step is to be truthful to yourself in your self-talk and what you say to yourself. That doesn't involve anybody else. That's just your integrity. You can do that to, to yourself. No one knows you're doing it. You can do it through meditation, reflection, walking the dog, whatever you want to do. Then when you are assured of that and in a good place, now you can start speaking to your family, friends, colleagues. Now there's another skill to learn, which is when we talk about sensitivity, this is when sensitivity, you can speak your truth sensitively. What's wrong with that? So your friend says, hey, let's go and get drunk tonight. And you go, well, that sounds like a great idea for you guys. Well, I'll come and have one or two with you, but then I'll leave you because you're much better drinkers than me. And you do it with sensitivity. You're not falling out with them. You're not arguing with them. You're not having, you're not causing a ripple. You're finding a cooperation that reflects your truth and reflects your friendship. And that's when I, we say, look at the video, sensitivity is your superpower. It means you can deliver your truth sensitively. But that's the second step. Do the first step first. Mm. And David, that to me, that makes so much sense because if you're not used to readily identifying your own opinion, your own desires, your own beliefs or thoughts about anything because you've spent so long following other people's opinions, thoughts, desires, that part of speaking your truth to yourself, getting familiar with the red light feelings, the inner tension and thinking, well, what do I want here? What do I believe here? What are my thoughts on this? And starting that inner conversation with yourself and getting clear on that, 
it's all that's the process of rediscovery Absolutely. that we've been putting off for all those years mm. and we have to get clear on it before before we can start telling all the people and speaking around, because otherwise we're going to be wishy-washy. Otherwise, we're going to start blowing the wind and start saying, oh, well, yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe you are right. You know, we have to be really focused first on ourselves so, and getting you getting really familiar with ourselves. So you use the word rediscovery. Yeah. I think a stronger word is reconnection. Yeah. You're connecting to what's already there, that shared spirit, essence, well, again, whatever you want to call it, that's something that is greater than your skin, flesh and bones, mind. That is who you are. And we said the authentic self. That is what I call the authentic self. Your spirit and your ego or your mind in balance, being authentic, living your truth, living your passion, following your intention, finding that Wu way, because yes, your friends may want to do this and you don't particularly want to do that, but you'll go along just, you know, and you'll find the Wu way because you can't always get exactly what you want. There is a flow and a movement, effortless effort. That's what Wu way means, going along effortlessly. So if they're going out for a big binge and you don't want to get binge, you can go for two or three drinks and then leave them and let, let them all get drunk and then you'll be much happier and healthier the following morning. Yeah. And I think, David, this, I mean, I think this is a major misunderstanding people have that almost puts them off doing this work to rediscover their own identity. People believe, okay, if I reject the mask, if I reject the pretense, if I stop trying to people please, if I strip all of that away, there's not going to be anything left. I'll be left with nothing. There's nothing. I, who am I? I I'm nothing. I've, I, I've, I've got nothing. But actually, that's a lie. That's a lie that the human-centered mind and the ego gives us to stop us from doing this exercise. Because actually, <coughs> when you strip all that back, that's where the Shen is there waiting for you to you reconnect. Got, that's the greatest crown it's not like, jewels it's you've It's not got. like you've got to then go out and find it. You've got to go out and find who you really are. You've got to go and purchase <laughs> it or find it in some mystical retreat or something. The Shen is always there waiting for you to reconnect. It's about clearing away all the lies, all the misunderstandings, rejecting the mask, rejecting that people-pleasing behavior. Then you will reconnect with the Shen that's already there. And that and that's a massive teaching, isn't it, really? And that really is one of our core teachings in the Wu Wei Wisdom. You know, you are amazing. As people laugh and they go, oh, I don't like it when you say that. You are amazing. You are awesome. You are divine. You are made of cosmic stardust. That's who you are. Clear away all this confusion and just be who you are. That's your authentic self. Nobody can give it to you and no one can take it away. Only you can deny it on yourself. That's why I prefer reconnection. Reconnect to your authentic self. Mm -hmm. Reconnect to who you already are. Stop living this false dream. Stop trying to dance to other people's tunes. Dance to your own tune. And David, what about people who say, well, yeah, that's really good, but I believe this mask, this false sense, this false sense of self that I'm presenting to the outside world it's actually serving a useful purpose. It's keeping me safe. It's keeping the peace. It's stopping my family from falling apart or everything I've constructed around me and my livelihood from falling apart. What about people who say that, that there is a, there's a greater payoff for keeping the mask? And I, and, I, and I would say, in my view, that's a lie. And you look at that greater payoff. That's what I do with my clients. We take that scenario that Alex has just said apart because... If you have to lie to keep the peace, then the peace isn't worth keeping. Because your integrity, your honesty, your value is worth far more than that. Again, just two days ago, a client said, well, if I started to speak my truth, I would have no friends. And I said, well, if that's the case, you've got no friends. Because if you've got a friend and you can't speak your truth to her or him, that's not a friend. It's the same with your family. Yes, if you're sensitive and deliver your truth and they can't deal with it, then there's some issues that you've got to sit down with your family, your partner, your friends and discuss. 
You don't have to be confrontational. Remember, there's a big difference between confrontation and confronting. This is why your sensitivity is a superpower. Use your sensitivity, but don't compromise your self-worth. Do not do that. That is a place you do not go to. And you follow your Wu Wei, and this is you being authentic. Brilliant. Thank you, David. Well, we've covered a lot yeah, of ground there. Been a long video today. A lot of ground there. I hope you find it useful. I think the main takeaway message for me is that who you are, this authentic self, is, is already there waiting, just waiting for you to reconnect to it once you strip away all those lies. If you have recognized anything we've talked about in this video or you want to share your own story, please comment below. Tell us what your main takeaways are, what you found most po powerful in this video. We'd absolutely love to hear from you. As you know, David works one-to-one -one with clients every week. So if you'd like to work with him on any of the issues we've discussed, I will put a link in the video description below so you can learn more about that. And we produce new videos every week for you. So if you've enjoyed and found this video helpful, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll receive a little notification every time we publish. We look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye-bye.